All right, so this is happening. The very first episode of my very own hybrid podcast. Now, you're either just listening to my voice on your favorite podcast platform, or you're listening and watching the video version on YouTube. There, I'll be drawing in my sketchbook as I cover that episode's topic. For this podcast, I want to be able to give my audience a choice. Maybe you need a little something to listen to while on your morning commute. Or maybe you're all cozied up on your couch and need something to help you unwind after a long day. In either case, I want it to feel like a sincere conversation with an old friend or maybe just a friendly stranger. So I am calling my podcast or show or however you want to brand this content, Fighting with Graphite. The overall theme I want to cover is facing the obstacles that stand in the way between all of us and our creative endeavors. It doesn't matter your age, your interests, your background, your ethnicity, and all the rest. We are all human, and while we are all different, we share the same struggles. 2020 has been a very unique year, to put it lightly. I've personally been through a lot this year, and odds are, so have you. Be that as it may, I'm not going to allow these current circumstances to stand between me and the things I want to pursue. It won't be easy, don't get me wrong. But to me, it's worthwhile. Speaking of which, the question for today is, what's something you find worthwhile? For me, it's always been art, but more specifically, traditional pencil drawing. For as long as I can remember, I always loved to draw, and I think a majority of us can relate to having some childhood memories of scribbling with crayons or something similar. Back then, we didn't care about the number of likes, what hashtags to use, none of that stuff really. I just cared about getting the ideas out of my head and onto a piece of paper. Really, it was just about having fun, and I think that's often an overlooked concept this idea of just doing something because it makes you feel fulfilled. Whatever you enjoy doing with your time is your business, no one else's. You don't necessarily even have to be good at your particular hobby because that's not what it's about. Doing what you enjoy isn't about trying to outdo anyone, it's just you doing you. And speaking from my own experience, when your attention is focused on doing something you enjoy, that's when you attract the right attention. Back in 2018, I became interested in showcasing drawings in the gallery or some sort of public space, partly because I wanted to get exposure in a real physical environment, and also, well, I didn't have enough space to store everything myself. And then I remembered that my town's library did in fact have a public gallery space. Anyone could showcase their work, you just had to provide some photo samples to the director and get their approval. At that time, I only had one drawing that I could showcase. It was a dot work piece of a dinosaur skull, more specifically, an Allosaurus. So just to backtrack a little, I do a lot of stippling work, and that often gets confused with pointillism. And just a very brief clarification, in pointillism, the artist uses multiple dots of different colors while stippling relies on the artist using a varying density of small dots to create shading. That's just my very, very brief um, explanation for the difference between those two techniques. Uh, anyway, I do like dinosaurs, by the way. I just want to mention that. Just keep that in mind as we move along. Oh, where was I? Um, yeah, dinosaurs. So dinosaurs have always been something I've been enamored by. These massive creatures that were larger than life, you know? Anyway, I showed the director my work, and she absolutely loved it. It was a great feeling. The one catch, however, was that artists who were chosen to be on display needed to occupy most of the gallery space. And this is where I went to the deep end. Oh, oh, oh okay, sure. Um, I could make 11 more skulls so that we could have a display of 12 pieces. How does that sound? That's what I told the director. I was a complete mad lad for saying that, but at that moment, it became official. In six months' time, I would have the opportunity to display my art to the public. The only obstacle was that I had six months to make 11 more drawings. To put things into perspective, back then I would average only 
one drawing per year. Maybe two if I was being super ambitious. For this gallery, I needed 11 pieces in six months. I'm not going to go in depth with how I made the drawings, that's not today's focus. In short, as you might have imagined, <laughs> it wasn't easy. There were times where I felt as if the entire world was my oyster and I could do anything. Other times, I would just cower and not draw for days until I forced myself to just make teeny steps forward. This was an opportunity for me to get what I wanted, and while it was an extremely ambitious goal, I knew I had to give it a shot. Fast forward six months, and it's time for me to set up my exhibit. I already knew my measurements, and I knew exactly which dinosaur went where. Yeah, um, the Triceratops goes here, the giant Spinosaurus will be in the corner over there, and yeah, blah blah blah, all the rest. So for two months, my dinosaur drawings would be on display for all of those who frequent the library. Of course, a public library isn't some fancy hipster cafe where all the cool kids hang out, or a high-end gallery where people tape bananas to walls, but it didn't really matter. I felt like a champion. However, the best had still yet to come. Every so often during those two months, I would stop by and make sure no one had stolen my art. <laughs> I'm only partly kidding about that, but I did visit and I shared many lovely conversations with many kind strangers. One day, I was adjusting one of the frames when suddenly I hear tiny shrieking. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Whoa, what was, what was that? I turn around and I see a man with a little kid holding his hand. Now, I'm not good with ages, but I could only assume the kid was about 8 or 10 years old. The dad points to one of my drawings and asks the little boy, do you know the name of that dinosaur? The little boy was shaking with excitement, and he said, Yeah, yeah, that's a Pachycephalosaurus. My jaw dropped. Oh, oh, what about that one? The father asked. Oh, oh, that's a Stegosaurus. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but seeing someone filled with that level of enthusiasm just made me so happy. I was shook that this kid had that level of knowledge and was able to call out most of the dinosaurs I made. I'm not suggesting that this kid is a genius, or that he'll grow up to be a professional paleontologist, but I am acknowledging and admiring that at a young age, he is actively collecting information that makes him happy, and you could feel the energy just emanating off him. I will never know what he grows up to become, but the fact is, on that day, a four foot tall kid inspired me. And to me, that made my efforts worthwhile. So that's it for the first episode. I just wanted to give everyone a better understanding as to what I'm trying to create here and what I'm about. I honestly have no expectations for this podcast aside from getting better with each try. For all I know, this could completely and utterly fail. <laughs> Maybe no one will listen. Maybe no one will watch the video series. Heck, maybe some crazy Russian hacker gets a hold of my account and I lose it. But whatever does happen, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I tried. If you have any constructive criticisms for me or have any specific questions that you would like for me to talk about, feel free to leave your input. I'd very much appreciate it. Everything I practice revolves around art in some way, shape, or form, whether it's personal development physical fitness, design, how I treat others, and blah 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 blah. Art has just... Art's done so much for me, and I just wanted to share that with you all. I was even thinking maybe down the line I have some guest speakers too, so that we can all get together and have a larger perspective on things, have better discussions. I have many, many plans in my noggin, so I'm just slowly taking my time and taking it one step at a time. I have no idea where this will go, and there's only one way to find out. If you've made it to the very end of this episode, it truly means the world to me, and no words in the English vocabulary can express my gratitude that you were willing to sit through all this. I hope you've taken something away from all this, and I'm really excited to build upon what I've started. So to reiterate my question to my listeners and viewers, what's something worthwhile to you? Feel free to share your answers below, 
or however podcasts work with that sort of thing. Apparently on Anchor, there's a leave a voice message feature, and I would actually love that. If you really want to make my day, please feel free to leave me a voice message. One big positive to me for doing a podcast is that you can't see my typos, and <laughs> let me tell you, I have plenty of those. Even autocorrect can't save my poor soul. Anyway, take care, everyone. 2020 is almost over, and whatever that means to you, just keep on keeping on. And I'll see you on the next one.